hello and welcome to my tutorial today today i'll be showing you how to make this animation you see it's a tree waving with as you see some cloth on the drying line something like that so without further ado let's get into the tutorial so first we double click on blender wait for it to open okay Go to general left click general now here we are i think we'll be using the default cube later so you come into this filter button here left left click the camera button and then press h so then you press first you need to access an add-on okay so you go to edit preferences then add-ons when you type in the add-ons you go to sapling sapling tree gen so you press s a so you type s a p l then make sure add curve sapling tree then the tick here is checked yes so then now we close it press shift a in the curve session you'll be able to see that we have this don't worry about all of this it's another add-on you need not worry about it now. So let's click on sapling tree gen. And you see that it opens a little rectangular box here. Left click it. So now these are the settings for what you are going to use to create a beautiful tree. Okay. So with this, do I think everything is okay? I just set the bevel resolution to two. The scale to seven and then come down all the way to branch growth. Nope. Go to left click amateur and check that empty box with amateur. Then go back to animation. That's why we animate the tree being blown in the wind. Okay. So first we go to leaves first. Left click show leaves. Okay, then you, the leaf distribution here, as you can see, it's not showing clearly. From inverse conical, you left click inverse conical, conical and change it to spherical. This rearranges it. And then with the leaves, I would like 300 leaves, so you press 300. Zero. Then enter and create small list files. So now for the final part, you go to the animation section. And this is where we animate the tree being blown in the wind. So for here, what you are going to do is you are going to discuss this section, this section, and then these three sections. So for the amateur animation over here, see this amateur animation. We we'll left click that, telling Blender that with, for the animation, we'll be using the skeletal bone system. You know, if you don't know what a bone is in Blender, here's a short video as you can see on your screen right now. This is how bones are. They're usually used in controlling meshes and stuff. We'll come here leaf animation this you are telling blender that you are going to the leaves are going to also be animated with the wind we'll have click that sometimes it takes a while for it to actually uh, how do you call it mm. come back if yours is slower if your computer system is slower this Clicking this leaf animation button should not be a worry for you. Leaf fast preview. So this is animation speed. One. So this is the actually the normal amount of speed, real life speed. Real life how fast the animation is going to be. And this is normal. It's not too fast, neither is it too slow. But if you like to make it slower, you just change to 0.7. And this will automatically make the animation slower. It will be playing now. You 
it's taking some time for it to process that. So I'll just change it back to one. Blender can take quite some time to process this. I think it's not really good. With the loop frames, change this to 120. I would like this to be a short animation. Okay. It's processing that. Now, if you press the space bar on your keyboard right now, you see that it automatically animates the tree fast, and that's cool, very cool. So now, this is the overall wind strength. So now, with this section, it says the amount of directional movement from the positive y direction. And the positive y direction is here. So what it's saying is that, then the wind is going to be blown from this side, so probably it's going to be blown to this side, yes. Towards the negative y direction. The higher it is, the more it looks windy. So, with this wind gas value, I'll be changing this to, let's say, 1.7. This can take quite some time. Just wait for it. Okay. So now, if you come here, to the wind gas, this was the wind gas S. I don't know what that is. When gas, I think the higher increases the more wind. So just enter one and press enter. We wait for it to load. Okay. So now if you press the space bar on your keyboard right now. Hmm. I'm still, I'm still not kind of getting the effect I need. Let me continue playing this. As you can see, I'm using the scroll wheel on the mouse button to rotate the view. And I'm scrolling upwards and downwards to zoom in and out. I can see it's not... It looks like a window. Don't worry if it's playing slowly. When you render this, it will look much nicer than this. This is the wind gas strength, wind gas frequency, and the overall ratio. This will like kind of multiply these and then combine it here, and this will output it here, something like that. So, enter 1.7. Let's see how that is. Remember, the higher this, they had the value of this. This box here, the wind settings over here, overall wind strength, the more the wind will become. And now we play, and you see that it's much more windy. I think I'll, I think I'll increase this to two and press enter. Wait for Blender to process this. Then people should make this a bit faster, especially for the blender producers. So, yes, and I think I'm satisfied with this. I'll just change the end time here. Right. Left click, turn it to 240, press enter. So that it becomes loopless. Now, when we play from frame 1 all the way to frame 240, it seems like it's never ending, and that's the effect I want for today. So, okay, that's all. So now, what you're going to do is make the cloth, as you can see on your screen right now. Okay, so first, I'll just play my animation. See that it's playing this way. Okay. Now, you can add, mesh, and play. Let's see which direction is blowing in. Same thing is blowing this way. So press R, X, then 90, then enter. 
press one on your keyboard on the number pad grab press G X and hold control and I'll hold it right there and I'll grab Z and move it up I'll press G then Z then you hold the control key whilst holding the control key make sure your finger is on the control key once you get it to where you like it you left click now let's watch where this is going to um, wait for it it's still seen it's going this way and that's what i like so you press one with scale press s and three press enter Sorry for the quick silence. We'll hit the tab key. Now we are going to subdivide this plane to make sure that because as you can see on your screen right now, there are there are two animations right now. One of them the plane has been subdivided, the other the plane has not been subdivided. So you now see the reason why we need to subdivide this plane. So we we'll left click click subdivide come here and set the number of cards to like 70 and this is good press tab tab on the keyboard this is good so now we need to set what we call a pin group okay because we want it in such a way that the cloth blows all right but it kind of holds here yeah, kind of holds the cloth so I'll teach you how to do that. Press one on your number pad, press tab, left click at, on an empty area. Make sure that your cursor is around here. Hold Alt and left click. And then you see it selects that entire row of vertices. So now we go into the object data properties. Click plus under vertex groups. Rename this to pin or whatever you like, then click left click assign. I'll show you how we, how this will interact with the cloth later. So press tab now. So now press three on your number pad. So for now, you are going to add a wind force so that it blows the cloth this way. So what to press is what to press is press. Go to add, press add, and the first fold select wind, press root R X 90, and that's what I want. So you grab shift and X, hold the control key. Then once I like it like that, I would let left click, press one, grab X, and make sure that it's around the middle of our plane, and this is what I like. Okay, so now it's time to apply the cloth physics to this. So you left click the cloth, go to the left click the physics properties, and add the cloth. Now you see that all of a sudden it goes downwards, and you don't know why. What you do is left click this button, jump to endpoint. We says jump to first frame. We says jump to first frame slash last frame in frame range. Okay, so we just left click. Left click this button and, that, and it goes back to where it was. So now here we are. Remember, we click this button over here, then let's click cloth. And now, for the quality step, set this to three. Want this to bake fast. I finally realized why cloth simulations bake slow, and it is because the quality steps, when they are very high, they bake very slow. Page frame because it wants to create it realistically, which is good, all right. But should I say it's not the best? Because there are some cloth simulations, this value is just enough and nothing else. Okay, so apart from that, we scroll down. On this uh, pointed triangle, on the left side of shape, let's click that under the pin group. 
the pin group we left click select left select pin by left clicking it and to select it so you close the shape button under collisions check check the check box the the check box that says self collisions the quality set it up to three this is enough and close the collision section press okay so now now we can play the animation let's see how it is you realize that nothing is happening to our cloth because it seems still but yet it's cashing in when it's caches it's creating new files i don't know where exactly they save these files on your system but it creates files so that whenever you replay it back it plays faster because it has saved data for how the cloth should fold up like whether you should fold up like this or like that you understand okay so the reason why it's not blowing like how this is blowing is because the wind here has a sh low sh strength and the strength is one which is very weak so you need to set this to like let's try something like 700 and then we press this space button you see now it blows like a cloth meanwhile because we access the shape here we selected a pin group you see it holds it there so you see that so now i think i just set this to 0.7 i want this to kind of be random Con over here you see it's convert effector force into airflow velocity i don't know what that is but hmm what do you think you could do guys comment down below i set this to 1.3 i think it calculates the air velocity so you left click this button play the animation so i think what this this did is that it kind of make this wind effector into airflow velocity mm, which i do not quite understand but i think i get the concept of this and now you see the wind is blowing nicely click this button again to go to the first frame left click the cloth and the cash would like to bake this first let me save my project by pressing Control S, selecting it and select and name it YTV Blender Tutorial 3. Press Enter and save Blender file. So now we left click Bake and see Bake faster like last time. See, as you said earlier in the video, it's because the quality time slips quality time steps are high that was for the last club simulation tutorial so for this see how quickly this bakes so now we'll just wait then this will be done with in no time we'll wait for it see so I'm frame getting to frame 140 Okay, going onwards and yet oh we forgot to set this to 240 anyway once you bake that in that will be good see how fast that that's what i like that's how quality time steps does so that's how you investigate blender get to know the program correctly you'll be able to make about anything with your mind very good software so now it's finished baking so play an animation hmm. see how that is that looks beautiful when you scroll in 
just left click so let's shade smooth and now make our cloth smoother nice what I want to do is press one shift D or rather left right click control Z let's control Z make sure you select this plane shift select the wind force press one shift D X hold control and move it over here So now this should make exact duplicate. See here. Yeah? Okay, that's what we need. So now we need to create the floor. So press Shift A, Shift and A, mesh, and then let's click plane. Scale, press S, Shift and Z, and type seven. Nope. Backspace. Let's try thirty. That's good. So enter 30. You realize that when you zoom and scrolling on the tree, these black things come. This is because of the armature. So once you add you see they are gone. So we like to not render this. We to save our renders. Okay, so now time for giving them this thing some materials. Okay. See everything is right now when we when we press material preview. Let's give this. Make sure you left click the leaves. If you want to check, just come here. Left click this. Select leaves. Make sure leaves is in bright orange like this. Go to materials. Press new. I would like to rename this material to leaves dot zero zero one. Left click this base color and set it to green to make green leaves. Now you are going to create a tree material. I want it to be like back. A similar thing to what you see on the screen right now. Or you might not see. So click new. Enter BRK.001. Now what you are going to do is create some nodes. So press Shift A. Then go for converter color ramp. Let's click this color and drag it to base color. We'll press Add. Um, what else will we need for this? Yes, a noise texture. So we'll go to texture. Looking for noise texture, noise. See just above point density, and under most grave texture, noise texture is there. So we drag it here. Connect the factor to this factor, and see what what effect it has. And now I just increase the scale. Let's click scale and enter seventy. Now you are going to do something that requires another add-on that needs to be enabled. You we'll go to Edit Preferences. On the set bar, type Node WR. Yes, Node Wrangler. Make sure that the box is ticked. Yes. Then once it's ticked, then you can close the window now. Press Ctrl T. Okay, it's nice. So let's click under the color ramp. Make sure that this black marker is selected. Let's click this black. Increase the hue. I think this is what they call the hue. Oh no, this is the V. Whatever. Drag this upwards. Make it brown. But let's click it and drag it. But this one will make it somehow reddish. Then scrolling dark downwards. So now we want this to have some sort of texture. Press Shift A. Under the search, we'll type B U M P bump node. Bring this downwards here. 
I want you to watch very carefully what is happening here. Let, let's click this normal and plug it into the normal. But still, nothing happens. So now, what you need to do is connect the factor and drag it towards the height. And this creates a backward texture. See how nice this? But you see that the tree looks ugly. Like it's been beaten by a lot of termites. So reduce the strength to something like 0 0.01. This is too small now. So type. Oh, I mean point one. So press point one. This is a bit rough. Sound nice. That is looking good. So now, I just like to make these two blue. So I let click and name this cloth dot zero zero one. And with the base color, left click and make it blue. So now I want this cloth to have the same material as this cloth, but I don't know how. So what to we'll do is press F5 under this ball section, left click that ball, set that the cloth is 0 0.001. And see, it makes instantly makes a copy. With this, it shows that two blender objects are using it. So let's open. Now I'll zoom out of that for you. Go back to layout view. See that's how it looks now. Hmm. Yes, I forgot one thing. Camera movement. Press zero on the number pad. Press N. Left click view. Left left click camera view. Make sure I left click this. So then, once you scroll in and out, you see that it's within this box. Now with this, all the barriers here, all these lines, it tells us that all of this within is what to show in the final render. Anything outside will not appear. Okay? So we'll scroll out. You see that some, some weird thing happens when you scroll out too much. And that's because of the clip end. So let's click your camera, scroll outwards till you see this, and with the clip and set this to a thousand, one, and three zeros, and press enter. See that fixes that problem. So, so pan the view like this, or we'll shift and press this. I want a nice and simple camera movement. So, make sure your camera is selected, press I, location, rotation, make sure that you, make sure you left click this button, first, press, make sure your camera is also selected, press I, location, rotation, yeah, we'll go to the last frame, by left clicking this button, and then we'll use the middle mouse button and drag it to how we want this. So maybe here. Then press I, location, rotation. So now, we we'll let's click this button again. Then play it. You see that it's a bit slow, but over time, you realize that the camera is moving so slowly. In the end, it will be fine. So press N, anti clock camera to view, press N again, and then go back. So now, time to give this a final touches. So now, press grab Z. Once you left click this light, make sure it's on sun now. It is way too bright. So reduce the strength to 7. See that it gives us. Now you realize that you forgot to make a material for this plane, which will be our ground. I'll go to shading. Let's click new. And I'll name this ground.001. Okay. So now what I'll do is press shift A. Color. Color ramp. 
connect the color to the base color shift a search noise texture or you go to add texture noise you go for noise let's drag it here let's click f5 connect the factor to factor you see that creates this black and white spots we we'll increase the scale to something like um want this tutorial right now it's about 30 minutes now so i'll make this um type 50 on the scale realize we don't want the ground to be black and white we want it to be like how you see on the screen right now kind of brownish so i'll make it drag it brown okay then over here i'll let's click here and make it a bit reddish and i want click this plus sign let's click the middle marker let's click this and make it a bit darkish realize it kind of makes some ground um what i'll do is let's click this marker drag it here let's click this marker and drag it and make sure it passes here then i create some how do you call it um variation to we'll add no search then bump the bump node let's click drag this here connect the normal to the normal and the factor to the height see blender is compiled oh it went anyway you see now our ground is now kind of rough Okay, that's what I want. I'll add a little bit of distortion. Oh, that's a bit too strong. So I'll use the strength of this. But let's click and drag in till it's something like this. On the noise section, press Ctrl T, and then with this on the scale X, I'll reduce this. I left clicking the left arrow. Want this to be a little bit of variation let's click the layout and see how beautiful this looks that is very nice let's click the sand so press G X and move this here press shift D X and move this here whilst holding the control key of course press R Y and make sure it's rotated like this now you see how this will be press zero and now it's time for one of my favorite parts setting up the background and then we render so let's click all properties let's click this yellow button that environment texture click open and i'll now come to show you how to locate blender's default hdris so go to local disk c or your your default um storage place for your operating system so double click on program files blender foundation i'm gonna show you see everything blender 2.92 2.92 data files studio lights weld and now you see we have all these three hdris so now hmm i like the forest for today oh nice <laughs> Let's click on this overlays button. And here we have. So you see when we play it here, it goes really slow. Let's click this strength. I'd like to reduce this strength to 0.5. And go 0.3. Or 0.1. I'll go with 0.2. Okay, I'll stay with 0.3. Click this button. Here comes our favorite part we are going to render. So what's rendering is, is that it's taking this information that we see here and converting it to a nice and beautiful video. So let's click here. Make sure it's on EV. Send the render samples to 20. Or half of this is about 32. So I'll change this to 32. If you like to view this in cycles, I'm using EV for those who really don't have a good computer. So if you change to cycles, See, it renders a bit slower. 
I'll just change this to Eevee for now. I want to help those who suffered in animation like me. So, with this, I think I'll set this to 620. Left click this output properties. Now, here's where things get interesting. This is 1920 by 1080. This is the default resolution for today. For usually videos, we have 4K, 2K, and 1K. But I think with this, I think it's 2K also. I don't know. Left click render region. Left click PNG. Go to FM MPEG video. Left click encoding. Select MP4. Scroll down. Make sure it's set on high quality. No audio. We don't need any audio for this. So I think I'll set where I would like to save this. I'll then go to final. And now. I think I'll just left click accept. Dimensions. Thought this. I think you are ready to render. So it's rendering. I just go to left click render here and then render animation. So that it renders the animation now. Oh, you see, we have a problem here. You see the cube is appearing. I'll show you how to fix that problem. See the cube here is appearing as it's rendering. That's not a good thing. So left. So I'll close this window. Now up here in the queue, we see that the camera button is still activated. One this to be deactivated so that it doesn't render it. So you left click <laughs> that the font so that with that it doesn't render it. Okay, with that I think everything else is set. I'll just quickly save this by pressing Ctrl and S. Then click render and render animation. Maximize this window. And as you can see, now it's gone. <coughs> so then, this is the end of the tutorial. And after rendering, once you go to where you saved your file in the output property section, you realize that you get what you saw as you started at the end of this video. That is if you did exactly what I did. Thank you for watching. And next time, hopefully, I'll be teaching you how to make a liquid simulation or perhaps a fire simulation. So, without further ado, bye-bye. See you later.